This Monero Mateo video is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Safely store, send, receive, and trade your Monero on Cake Wallet on Android and iOS. All right, guys, my name is Mateo. Welcome back. So we've got a number of things to talk about today. It looks like GoFundMe is joining the fray. It looks like they're getting into the financial war that we've documented here on the channel for quite a while. It's heating up. It looks like the pressure is now coming down upon the opposition to what I'm starting to call the Axis Financial Syndicate, uh, consisting of you know PayPal, uh, now GoFundMe, Patreon, and other financial platforms which have been used by you know everyday people that are now turning against those everyday people. Similar to the social media sites, which were once for everyone to say whatever it is they wanted to to now only those who are going along with the program. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Speaking of which, I just want to give shout outs real quick to those who are going through the enemy channels behind enemy lines to support the channel. So uh, Josh, Ken, Lutz, and Ronan, thank you for continuing to support us on Patreon. If you want to support us on Patreon, I've got a couple of unique videos up there. They're a little bit old, but they're just for the patrons. I need to get some new uh, original fresh content for you guys up there. Thank you for supporting us and continuing to do so. Uh, thank you for all those who are continuing to donate. And remember, guys, if you do donate with Pirate Chain or Monero or some of these other private cryptos that we've got in the comment section, go ahead and send me a message uh, either through Proton Mail or through uh, the wallet, which you can interestingly do with Pirate Chain. Uh, I think they call it like uh, Rum and Roll or something like this. They have a particular name for it where you can send messages as well, which are encrypted through the blockchain. You can do that with Concealed Network too, which is kind of cool, and Zeno. So. Some cool things going on there. We can make it like a private super chat. And that's something I want to start back up. We used to do that before. I want to bring it back. So it's just a way that I can interact with you guys, a way that you can interact with me, and we can make this more of like a mutualistic type deal. But anyways, the news for today is that uh, GoFundMe has stolen some money from people. Uh, and they're going to be giving it back, but they pretty much bended the knee to the Canadian government and they are going to take that $10 million or so, which was dedicated to the truckers, and they're going to be now refunding it back over the next 7 to 10 business days to all those who had donated to try to support these truckers in their fight for freedom against this ever-increasing authoritarian Canadian government. And it's not just the Canadians, it's all the Western world. Um, and we're starting to see some rollback of these restrictions, and I think it's because the people in power... They want to make it look like they are doing this sensibly in the name of science. It's not as a result of the people starting to get upset and starting to push back against them because if they give the people that victory, then the people may start to get ever more aggressive in other areas. You know, if you give somebody a victory, that emboldens them to go for more. And so we're starting to see some governments throughout Europe and in the United States, I'm starting to see a little bit where they're rolling back the restrictions and they're saying, oh, the variant isn't as deadly as it was before. And so we ourselves, not necessarily because of what you, the people want, but we ourselves are deciding for you that we're going to start to roll these things back. Uh, the Canadian government, the Italian government, and some governments are still being rather oppressive and are moving along with the program. But um, yeah, this GoFundMe thing was a total scandal. And this highlights what we've talked about recently, uh, talking about Fuentes and some other people, dissent or dissidents of those who are in power, okay, they're going to need Monero. They're going to need crypto, uh, which makes it so that not only are their donations and their financial channels of support private so that the government can't take their funds because the government took $500,000 from Fuentes out of his bank account. Okay, so the traditional banking system is not going to work. And by the way, Fuentes has kicked off literally every platform we named earlier. Patreon, uh, you know, PayPal, GoFundMe, you're, good luck trying to support him through there. And he's been debanked as, as well as many other conservatives and Christians. And so not only do you not want that channel to be exposed to conscription and to demolition by the powers that be, but you yourself want to stay private. There are some people out there that you'd like to support, maybe you can't publicly support, that if it's found out that you did support them, either through GoFundMe or through Bitcoin donations, which has happened before, um, then 
you could find yourself in trouble and you could find yourself associated with things that maybe you didn't want to have yourself associated. Maybe your employer finds out, maybe the government finds out, depending on who you're you know, trying to support, you could find yourself in some hot water. So this is just highlighting uh, the success of Monero and the potential that it has moving into the future to successfully help those who need the help and are not going to be helped by the government, but rather oppressed and attacked by the governments. And also, I do want to note that this is kind of like a failure as well. We should take responsibility for this, guys, and say, you know what, we could have done better. If we had gotten the word out more, if we had been more proactive, then this may not have ever happened. I mean, frankly, we needed something like this in order to highlight the importance of things like Monero and crypto donation systems. But uh, because we weren't as proactive enough as we should have been to maybe get some Monero bros out, you know, with this Freedom Convoy or, you know, getting Monero bros out with flags and T-shirts on the front lines of some of these protests to make it known to the people at the protest that, yes, this is a way that we can financially support each other and build a parallel economy that doesn't rely on these people that were protesting. You know, that is a fault that we should own up to. Um, and I hear this a lot in the Monero sphere where it's like, oh, well, people realize Monero is awesome uh, when they need it, right? Uh, uh, people don't care about privacy till they need it, blah, blah, blah. I get that perspective, and I think that's right to many degrees. And I've received emails about this and such. But what we're trying to do here with Monero First, what we're trying to do here just with the channel and what it is some of you are doing, like Doug and Kevin and uh, some of the other cool Monero bros out there, is that we're trying to be proactive. We're trying to get people ahead of the curve because we know it's coming. We know that privacy is going to be important with the CBDCs. I mean, if you think this is bad, just wait till the CBDC comes, right? We're trying to get out ahead of this so that we can have a robust parallel economy set up uh, in the face of what will be uh, pretty significant resistance to stuff like that forming. And we're going to get to articles later in the show that indicate that our lovely Axis Financial Syndicate, our enemies in the financial sphere, are trying to get out ahead of our curve, okay? They are already saying that if you're using Monero, if you're using Bitcoin, if you're using other cryptocurrencies, you know, you are a white taco supreme. You're a nationalist. You are somebody who is filled with resentment and hate and everything like this, right? They're already getting out ahead of it, okay? So expect that to come. Expect all the slings and arrows which come along with being antagonistic to the powers that be that want to um, dissolve your country, its borders, and amalgamate it into a global, worldwide, technocratic world order. Okay, so let's move on to the next uh, article here that details kind of what happened here with the GoFundMe thing because this is significant. Um, I think that now so many people are aware of the financial war element of all of this, which is the crux, really, of what we're in. Um, you know, if you look at Libya, if you look at Iraq, if you look at just the way geopolitics works, a lot of it is financially based. It's not based on politics. It's not based on, oh, they're, uh, you know, building weapons over there, which may harm Israel or, or something like this. Um, it, it's they're trying to get off our financial system and the reason America is as powerful as it is and as wealthy as it is is because we're able to encourage other people to use our currency and increase the value of our currency um, artificially, okay? And that makes it so that we can get labor, we can get goods, and we could live a high standard of life really without actually having to produce for it and to make the sacrifices for it because other people are using our currency and our financial system, they're making the sacrifices for us to live a high standard of living while they remain impoverished, right? So that is sort of how this all works. And if we attempt to get off the system, just like other nations have, then you're going to come against massive amounts of resistance. And as more people wake up to this, as more people wake up to the fact that they are controlled financially speaking more than any other way, the more that people are going to be attracted to Monero um, and the Freedom Coin Covenant, right? So GoFundMe has blocked $10 million of donations destined for the so-called Freedom Convoy in Canada. So this is Yahoo News, if I didn't say that before. Um, they're protesting the rules. Trump and Elon Musk 
has come out, has uh, praised the Freedom Convoy, uh, and they will now be returned to donors. And at first, GoFundMe tried to take these funds and quote unquote donate it to causes that the truckers support. Okay, uh, which were like you know LGBT things and a lot of woke leftist things, right? So they literally tried to take money, which was going to be used for an anti-authoritarian cause and redirect it to pro-authoritarian causes, basically, um, and anti-family causes and, you know, stuff like that. So Trump came out and support them. Uh, GoFundMe said that it supports peaceful protests, and we believe that the intention of the convoy uh, was for that when it was first created. But they said now we have evidence from law enforcement that the peacefully pre- – peace- oh, goodness gracious, excuse me. The previously peaceful demonstration has become an occupation uh, with police reports of violence and other unlawful activity. So also recall that GoFundMe was a channel that funneled millions of dollars to groups like Black Lives Matter and Antifa that caused massive amounts of damage in the country, right? Um, Certainly more than any of these trucker protests. Um, Moving on. Uh, that's, that's about it. And, you know, people are pointing out that some of these truckers are waving flags that they don't like and they associate with hate and all this stuff. Again, that's how they're going to try to get you. They're going to try to associate you with hateful groups and then they're going to say whatever it is that you're representing here because it's associated with this symbol that we have deemed to be hateful, the entire thing is illegitimate and it needs to be opposed by the powers that be. Right, so this is a shout out I want to give to the Bitcoin bros. And Bitcoin bros, we have some differences, you and I, but I really admire this work here. He says, wow, we did it 100 million sats, a whole Bitcoin in three days. And I think they've actually gotten more than that. I think they're up to 300 million sats uh, or three Bitcoins. So that's great. Good job, Bitcoin bros. Uh, We should do what you're doing. And I believe that there are other people in Monero who are kind of getting on the ball with this stuff, but I haven't seen anything confirmed as of yet. But I just want to talk about some other things in regards to this financial war, which isn't just in the fiat realm, which isn't, you know, I'm sending US dollars through Patreon or GoFundMe or PayPal to this person that I want to support, and it's not happening anymore because they're either getting deplatformed or my money is just being conscripted by these entities on the behalf of the government. No, it's going to be in crypto too. Okay, we've talked about big coin here on the channel, and I want to show you this article. Now, I've spoken rather positively on Gab uh, consistently here over the last few weeks. I think it's the best alternative to trip, the Twitter. They're the most Christian uh, social media platform that there is. Um, and I believe that Torba is a positive force for freedom of expression and speech currently in the country. And he was put under pressure by Coinbase back in 2019. This is from CCN.com. Coinbase deplatforms Gab while Square allows Bitcoin withdrawals. And Square is Jack Dorsey's company, remember. And guys, I'm still skeptical of Jack Dorsey. He is on the forefront now of the Bitcoin revolution. Okay, and, you know, he's coming out with these tweets saying, oh, Rothbard's awesome. What happened in 1971 with the gold standard and all these things? Like, people are thinking that he's becoming awake to like Austrian economic philosophy and how Bitcoin integrates with that and how evil the current financial system is and all this stuff. But I'm still skeptical because Twitter has been an instrument of censorship. It's been an instrument of suppressing the freedom of speech, particularly speech, which is in support of that which he claims to not support, which is, you know, free market economics and, you know, kind of Western civilized ideals. And so I'm skeptical of Jack Dorsey still. Let me know what you guys think. But now that Meta is coming onto the scene, which is Facebook, uh, and Square is partnering with Meta as part of the crypto, uh, you know, open patent alliance or something like this, um, now that they're grouping up, and by the way, Coinbase is part of that alliance as well. I'm very skeptical. I'm very skeptical as to where this is going. I think that Bitcoin is going to get co-opted. And I think that, to some degree, it already has with what we've looked into in regards to MasterCard, the digital currency group. But I think that 
uh, they're going to lead Bitcoin and crypto into regulatory capture by the government. They're going to be on the forefront advocating for this stuff. And by the way, who's part of COPA as well, other than Coinbase and Square and WorldCoin and Blockstream, who we've talked about here with Adam Back, uh, MicroStrategies, Michael Saylor's company, right? And he wants the U.S. dollar to be the main uh, currency which is used throughout the world, not Bitcoin, the U.S. dollar. He wants Bitcoin to back it up as like, quote unquote, digital gold. Okay, so we kind of see where this is going. But I want to comment on this particular story because... Again, we see the deplatforming of Christian conservatives, but it's happening in the crypto space now. Um, so let's read this. Gab and anti-censorship social media platform has reportedly been deplatformed by Coinbase, one of the world's largest Bitcoin wallets and exchanges. It's not just a Bitcoin wallet. Uh, and by the way, Coinbase does not allow our lovely Monero on there. There's no legal precedent for them to do so. Um, they can totally have it on there because of Perkins Coie saying that it's totally legally compliant uh, because if you and spend keys and things like this, it could opt into regulation. The fact that you can opt into regulation but also have a good amount of privacy uh, to yourself actually increases financial security. I think they said that. Um, but still, Coinbase doesn't allow it. Cracking cracked down on Monero as well in the UK. They delisted. Monero. And by the way, Kraken is part of the Copa Alliance that we were talking about earlier with Coinbase. So <coughs> something interesting to note. On January 5th, the Gab team said the accounts of both Gab and Andrew Torba, the CEO of Gab, were closed by Coinbase. So that's pretty interesting, isn't it? Uh, and Jordan Peterson, by the way, was kicked off Patreon. A best-selling author and the acclaimed Canadian clinical psychologist Jordan Peterson, who is in the process of developing a new Patreon-like platform, said that the decision of Coinbase to platform Gab is likely to be an unpopular move in the cryptocurrency community. Right, because it's supposed to be like, oh, we're bringing everybody in the financial system. Oh, nobody's going to be debanked in this new crypto world order, right? It, you know, we're going to provide banking to everybody. It's going to be inclusive. And we're starting to see already that that's not going to be the case. Um, and we talked about, uh, you know, OFAC perhaps getting enough of an influence on the Bitcoin blockchain because so much mining hash rate is coming back to the United States that, I mean, censorship is a total possibility. And we won't go into all that because we've talked about that numerous times here on the channel. But, um, yeah, they're going to find a way if there is a way and they're going to work towards that. Monero is far more censorship resistant and decentralized and robust than Bitcoin. Uh, which is, again, why we're trying to get the Bitcoin bros to seed to Monero and to not necessarily give up Bitcoin altogether, although that'd be ideal, but to just recognize that, you know, if the crackdown really happened, which it's coming, Monero is so much more suited to handle the pressure. And you know what? Maybe Monero is a good backup that uh, maybe we should plan B to. But moving on back to the article, Peterson suggested that the replication of censorship by major financial institutions contradicts the purpose of cryptocurrencies as decentralized, open, and transparent. Right, exactly. Down we go further into the rabbit hole. Why are MasterCard, Visa, PayPal, Patreon acting as censors? They are fighting quote-unquote hate speech, but the Achilles heel of such conceptualization as who defines hate speech, uh, who... Oh, uh, this is weirded. This is worded weird. Um, answer those to whom you would least want to grant such power, he said. Okay, sorry, this is getting weird. Let's move on to the next article. So, interestingly enough, they said down here, what? They said MasterCard, Visa, PayPal, and Patreon. Notice MasterCard. We've talked about MasterCard multiple times here on the channel. Uh, how they're working on carbon credit cards that are going to limit your purchases based on how much carbon you're using um, in your consumption based on the data that they're receiving uh, about your purchases. And then they're working with CBDCs um, or they're working with central banks around the world to develop CBDCs. So that's something interesting to note. So they are deep, deep, deep into the financial uh, you know, background mechanics. In the development of the new crypto world order, we've made videos on that. A lot of CFR, a lot of Council on Foreign Relations stuff, a lot of connections to the UN. I mean, they are the financial power structure, really. I mean, this is uh, Saruman or Sauron or whatever, right? Uh, but 
that brings us to our next conversation. Um, talking about MasterCard. Yeah, and tying MasterCard into our next conversation, which is going to just be building on the theme that we've been talking about here on this channel for quite a while, which is the theme of data analytical companies in the big industry, which is going to be popping up to track and trace everything going on on these public blockchains. Um, it looks like CypherTrace, which has been acquired by MasterCard, which is one of our favorite data analytical companies, it looks like they are now... Um, using honeypots of sorts in order to figure out people's Bitcoin addresses. So let's go read into this. This is a recent article which was released by darknetlive.com. And so they say, CypherTrace, a blockchain intelligence company owned by MasterCard, uses honeypots to gather information about Bitcoin addresses. Okay, According to a promotional material uh, sent to a government official, Right. And so these are going to be interlinked with governments, exchanges, uh, because exchanges want to know everything about what's coming on and off their exchanges. They want to know what bitcoins in particular are good, which ones are not, which ones are tainted. Uh, this plays into the whole fungibility problem, which Bitcoin bros that I've seen try to address the fungibility problem. They say, oh, it's a legal concern. It's a legal problem. Not the case. Uh, you have investors who want uh, Bitcoin that is of a certain environmental cleanliness uh like kevin o'leary for example but um yes it's a big part of the fungibility problem the fact that this stuff can be tracked and traced and given that we're going into an environment of ever more uh government authoritarianism and financial crackdowns and controls and such uh that fungibility problem is only going to get worse not better from here so Let's go ahead and just talk more about this because it's pretty important. A Freedom of Information Act, a FOIA request from Coindesk, uh, which, by the way, is just interestingly enough uh, owned by the Digital Currency Group, which is invested in by MasterCard. So good they're doing reporting on themselves. Ask the Treasury for emails that include the word cryptocurrency or several synonyms uh, or mentioned prominent companies in the industry like Coinbase or Ripple. Uh, in the trove of documents received nine months later, uh, they found an email sent to then-Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin by the CEO and co-founder of CypherTrace. The email contained promotional material in the form of slides about the services provided by CypherTrace. Like Chainalysis, CypherTrace advertises blockchain intelligence services to the public and private sectors. The slide shared by Coindesk appears to be part of a promotional uh, material set for CypherTrace is CypherTrace Inspector quote unquote suite, uh, which the company describes as quote a suit of powerful and easy to use de anonymization tools for law enforcement. Now, they've tried to crack Monero uh, consistently over the last couple of years. They haven't really done this successfully, uh, and even then, uh, in this you know privacy cryptographic arms race of sorts. Monero's privacy is only getting better and better and better. Uh, they're increasing the ring size. You've got Seraphis coming, which I need to do more videos on. But yeah, they can't crack it as much as they're going to probably sell the government that they are cracking it. It's one of the reasons why Monero was delisted off Kraken uh, in the UK because the data analytical companies which work with Kraken, they're like, yeah, we don't really want to work about this. We don't want you to worry about this one. This one's kind of tough for us. Frankly, you should just get rid of it altogether because... You know, they didn't want to own up to the fact that they really couldn't trace this stuff, which they can't. So um, the more that we actually see Monero come off of exchanges in places like South Korea and in the UK and other parts of the world, it's probably only going to increase. Uh, the better you should actually feel about Monero's privacy, because if it wasn't an issue, why wouldn't they have it on more exchanges? Why wouldn't Coinbase have it on its exchange? They would. They wouldn't have a problem with it. Uh, in fact, they would like more people to use Monero, thinking that it was private, when it's really not, because then people are going to do more legal things with something that they could actually track and trace, which is awesome for the government, right? So, um, yes. Yes, Monero is still very private, and we can anticipate its privacy being just completely fine into the future. Um, and CypherTrace don't got nothing on it. So moving on. Uh, investigators, back to the article, use this integrated platform to obtain solid evidence on individuals who use Bitcoin to launder money, finance terrorism, oh, I just said it, and carry out uh, substance dealing, extortion, and other crimes. The intuitive cipher trace visual environment allows even non-technical agents and analysts to easily identify and trace criminals who attempt to use Bitcoin, ding, 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 on the internet to conceal their illicit activities. The platform also supports de-anonymization de 
anonymization for more than 800 cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. And by the way, through their tools, they're able to identify when people are using mixers. And all they have to do, guys, as we're about to get to, is they just got to go to these exchanges and say, hey, anything which is coming from a wallet which does mixing, like uh, Wasabi or Samurai, or anything that comes from a part of the blockchain which looks like it's engaging in analytic or in mixing activities, just go ahead and taint those coins, right? And so people are using these tainting services and they think that this is just a foolproof way to make their Bitcoins and their Bitcoin Cash coins private. They may not understand the fact that it's not that they could clean up all their coins and mix in their tainted coins with clean coins and make everything clean, right? It actually could be the case that everything that comes out of the mixer is tainted and can't be used because it was used in a mixer to begin with, right? And as the crackdowns on mixers continues, which I anticipate to be the case, um, the more that it's going to be problematic. Now, Litecoin just integrated Mimble Wimble into the protocol. We're going to have to do a video on that. It's not foolproof. It's not foolproof. It's a layer two, which adds more complexity. Uh, you also run into the whole Zcash problem where some transactions are private, some are not, which means you're able to just on one level, identify who's trying to use private transactions to begin with. And then there are privacy issues with Mimblewimble. Now it's a little bit better. And amazingly, if you want to use Cake Wallet in order to flip your Litecoin into Monero, which a lot of people do, and Cake Wallet provides a pretty good platform for doing that, you can actually do it more privately, which is good. So we're not saying that it's a bad thing. And we're not saying in any way it's a competitor to Monero and its private uh, capacities. But it's a better way for you to get Monero more privately. So that's good. That's good. Um, but they say back to the article, this de-animization capacity expands to include more than 87% of global virtual assets. So I'm curious what the other 13% are. What are the other 13% of global virtual assets? Could you guys guess? Could you guys guess? I wonder. Um, and sorry, my mouth... My salivatory glands are kind of messed up. I'm trying to quit smoking, and they get fired up when I don't have a cigarette. And so I'm constantly have to, uh, I have like the reverse of cotton mouth, right? Um, so back to this unlike the publicly available data sheet and product page for Inspector on the company's website, the slides sent to Minutian listed honeypots, quote unquote, as one of the sources of data used by the company. CypherTrace does not make this information publicly known. Uh, as a result, we do not know anything about Cypher Trace's honeypots. But here's an example. In unrelated slides from a Chainalysis presentation to Italian police, it was revealed the way Chainalysis uses a honeypot uh, under the radar. Cypher Trace's tactics could resemble those employed by the industry leader, Chainalysis. Uh, and Chainalysis is invested in by the Digital Currency Group. Just something else to note. So they say, the slides which surfaced on dark leaks, the decentralized information black market reveals that Chainalysis collected the IP addresses. Now, this is important. Listen. Chainalysis collected the IP addresses of people who used a block explorer secretly controlled by the company. Uh, when a user visits the site and looks at specific transactions or addresses, Chainalysis associates their IP addresses with transactions or addresses. With the transactions or addresses. So that's quite something. That's quite something. And they say capability. Suspects may use Wallet Explorer to monitor transactions rather than checking exchanges directly for fear of leaving a footprint. The exchange scrapes the suspect's IP address. Chainalysis owns WalletExplorer.com, and as such, we collect this data results. Using this data set, we provided law enforcement with meaningful leads related to IP data associated with a relevant cryptocurrency address. And by the way, down here in this MasterCard article, they're talking about using artificial intelligence and cyber capabilities of both MasterCard and CypherTrace um, to do what it is that they're trying to do, right? So AI is going to play into all this. Um, so they're going to be able to set up systems by which case they can do this stuff kind of automatically, I imagine. And blockchain.com uh, is heavily invested in by Google, and that's another um, site that you could go to look up transactions and look up activities in people's wallets and such. And 
that's something to note. There's probably stuff going on there too. It is also possible to conduct a reverse lookup on any known IP address to identify other Bitcoin addresses. It can also collect the data of an address of a data form that is yet to transit on the blockchain. That is, the Bitcoin address provided as part of an investigation into a kidnapping or a threat to life if the suspect checks his own address. Yeah, so that's pretty crazy, right? So in ways that 99% of people out there cannot even contemplate, they're having their identities locked in to their wallets. And if you get your identity locked into one Bitcoin wallet and you're sending your Bitcoin all over the place, okay, then they can get with the taxing authorities, uh, which allows them to get even more information on you. They could link that with uh, stores to figure out what it is you're buying. And boom, there you go. You've got basically the new financial system, which is able to look up all of your debit card purchases and what it is you're doing online to advertise things to you that maybe you don't need and to maybe get in touch with credit agencies and get in touch with other agencies who are looking for this kind of data, right? So, um, and law enforcement and, you know, people like this. This is kind of crazy. Um, yeah, so you can read more about this, but they're going to come up with ever more ways to figure out all the data that they want to figure out on the blockchain. And there are so many, so many, so many incentives for them to do this to the point where I think it's actually going to become a regulatory initiative because companies like MasterCard are very close with the government. Um, they have their own agenda and their own plans. Um, like the head of their MasterCard foundation, which is a 10% share owner of MasterCard, is uh, um, very sketchy. <laughs> He's part of not only the Council on Foreign Relations, but he's part of the Trilateral Commission. And he's the head of the International Chamber of Commerce. Okay, and he was an ex-investment uh, banker and part of the UN and all this stuff. Okay, like so MasterCard basically is the oligarchy. <laughs> like they're pretty much part of that. And you can be sure that the people in the companies that MasterCard and the Digital Currency Group, which is part of MasterCard, are going to invest in, namely a lot of companies like CypherTrace and Chainalysis, they're going to lobby the government in order to make more regulations that make it so that there's more demand for these kinds of services. Okay? So it's not only just there are going to be private initiatives done by you know advertisers and uh, big tech companies and other uh, companies that want your data to hire firms like this in order to get that data, but there may be regulatory initiatives, okay? So that's something to note because check this out. Uh, well, we don't need to talk about that again. Let's talk about how uh, Fuentes' Bitcoin was tracked by the feds and that got him locked into some trouble, right? And we talked about that in our big tech, big coin and big government video. Go check it out. But Seth for Privacy... Uh, tweeted about something which has been going around on Twitter. Okay, so let's just talk about what happened here real quick because somebody, because they had put up tainted Bitcoin that they didn't know was tainted as collateral for a loan, uh, they got into some trouble. So let's just read this real quick. Check this out. And this is going to become more... Uh, frequent of an occurrence. And people are blaming BlockFi for this, but really it's the problem with Bitcoin, fundamentally, because of its transparency problem, its fungibility problem, etc. So check it out. Took out a loan for $300,000 and put up $600,000 worth of Bitcoin as collateral. Market kept going down, so I kept posting collaterals I needed to keep the loan healthy. I got an email saying that the loan was being called back because of, quote-unquote, indirect exposure to a mixing service. And as Seth for Privacy notes up here, um... He himself did not mix the coins. This dude had bought these coins off BISC, which is a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer exchange, which is actually what Haveno is branching off of. It's uh, going to be the new Monero-based private peer-to-peer uh, -peer decentralized exchange. BISC is not private because it's based on Bitcoin. But he bought these coins off BISC. And because BIST does not have all these data analytical companies working with it because it's not a centralized exchange like Coinbase, um, he didn't know that these coins were going to be considered tainted or they were mixed. And even if they were mixed, he probably didn't see a problem with that because maybe he doesn't even know that this is a problem for centralized uh, regulated firms like BlockFi, right? And so he 
got these coins from somebody who had mixed the coins. And he got an email saying that the loan was being called back because of this. Okay. He appealed the decision because he bought the Bitcoin back. Let me just go back to reading this in May of 2020 and kept it on my treasure the entire time. However, since I didn't buy it on an exchange and the person before me mixed it, I got absolutely screwed. In summary, I took out a loan when Bitcoin was about $65,000, cost me over $6,000 in origination fees, paid two months of loan payments, got liquidated at $37,000 a few minutes before the pump to 42 today because of indirect mixing exposure, quote unquote, and now I lost more than half of my Bitcoin holdings, have a huge tax bill, and was screwed out of a fortune. Well, I don't know how you have a huge tax bill necessarily. Well, well, I don't know when he bought the Bitcoin, so maybe he does. Do not ever use BlockFi loans. Or you just uh, or you just don't use Bitcoin. He says, worst experience I have ever had in Bitcoin. Yeah, and I don't know if you can do loans with Monero um, on BlockFi. I don't know what the deal with that is, but yeah, that's an issue. That is an issue. So, yeah, I mean, that's how deep this stuff goes. And this is all part of the financial warfare theme of this video, guys. Okay. This is why we're trying to get more people to pivot to Monero. Stuff like this doesn't happen with Monero. Okay. Fungibility matters as Seth says. So thank you, Seth, for posting that. People have to know about this stuff. Okay. People have to know about this stuff. And let's go to this here. $3.5 $3.5 billion, this is from the Bitcoin archive, that was stolen in the 2016 Bitfinex hack was just moved. This Bitcoin stash is blacklisted by major exchanges. Okay, so this Bitcoin is essentially uh, censored. Is it not? Can someone tell me otherwise? <laughs> um, he cannot get this money onto exchanges. And by the way, if he decides that, you know what, I'm going to go through uh, an atomic swap channel. I'm going to go to Monero, as some people have suggested, uh, have suggested, or I'm going to go on BISC and just sell this for another crypto to some schmuck who, uh, you know, is buying this off this exchange without checking, like this gentleman here, to see if it's tainted or is coming from, uh, you know, something like this, a hacked event. Well, then uh, the person who buys these coins could end up in trouble, right? So. This is why I keep saying the channels for Monero and Bitcoin atomic swaps now open. And now that Bitcoin has taproot, uh, there is a higher capacity and likelihood that people are going to be using this channel. We've talked about that in different videos. But if you have Monero, why are you going to shift from Monero into Bitcoin? That's significant risk. Okay, And if anything, you're going to want to hire one of these data analytical companies, excuse me, uh, you're going to want to hire one of these companies and firms in order to confirm that that Bitcoin is not tainted, right? A Monero bro, hiring a data analytical company, I mean, come on, this is fiction. (laughs) This is Alice in Wonderland, right? Nobody would do such a thing, but maybe some Bitcoin bros do this. But for me, one of the only reasons why a Bitcoin bro, or excuse me, a Monero bro would want to get into Bitcoin and exchange their Monero for Bitcoin is because you have more opportunities for getting loans and posting Bitcoin as collateral or maybe loaning out your Bitcoin, etc., doing something with it that could get you a yield uh, than Monero. But the problem is, if you're running into issues like this, if that Bitcoin is tainted, oh man, well, then you're screwed. So that's a huge risk to take into account. And so I imagine the spread is going to be rather big. Um, if you're a Bitcoin bro trying to atomically swap your Bitcoin and Monero, I imagine you're going to be paying a premium. It's not going to be the other way around. So that's something to note. How long have we been going on for? This might be a little bit of a longer video, but it's important. Um, Let's talk about this now. And we talked about this more in our Slate uh, video response when they came out with an article which was uh, kind of written in the same spirit as this Economist article. But The Economist says, which is, by the way, kind of a globalista uh, firm, 26.2 million followers. So, yeah, big, big publication here. They said technological advances in crypto have made privacy tokens like Monero. Don't don't call it a token, okay? They say they have made privacy tokens like Monero, which high transactions possible. These groups have probably flocked to them. So, interestingly enough, they say probably. <laughs> probably flocked to them. 
Now, we do have evidence that uh, some people who are associated with this have flocked to them. Um, but why are they saying probably? Why are they saying probably? Because they're getting ahead of the curve, guys. Like I said in the beginning of the video, they're going to try to set up this narrative before people come to the, re the realization that they need privacy. I imagine that's what they're doing, and that is what they have been doing. Um, and the Monero Bros come to the defense of Monero in all the comments based. That's what's up. Um, there was a good comment down here by Crypto Grampy, friend of the channel. He says, want to send money to your Jewish relatives in Nazi Germany? Don't send them fiat in an envelope or via censorable GoFundMe, and don't send them a completely traceable, transparent ledger currency like Bitcoin or Dodge. Send them an arrow. <laughs> so that was a pretty good response to this. Um, but yeah, that's what's going to be what's coming. They're going to try to link you in with uh, you know, bad people that the regime doesn't like. And Fluffy Pony has a pretty good response to this because the economist then said the same thing as Bitcoin uh, to a big extent. They said, as long as Bitcoin and its ilk are decentralized, the ability of far-right groups to use them will remain. <clears throat> so they're setting up the narrative that anyone who wants to hide their transactions and to keep their financial life private and anyone who wants to engage in decentralized finance to begin with, whether it's private or not, uh, is furthering the interests of far right groups and white taco Supremes. <laughs> like, that's what they're trying to say here. That's the narrative they're trying to set up. And Fluffy Pony responds, he says, quote unquote, as long as Bitcoin and its ilk are decentralized, the ability of disadvantaged maligned, abused, segregated, and at-risk groups to use them will remain. So that's basically what they're trying to say, right? And then he's talking about the criminals that use the US dollar, of course, which we know about. <clears throat> but here's just another uh, example of this in Yahoo. Funding hate. The far right's pivot to crypto. Uh... And we could go more into that. They talk about Monero there too, in the same spirit that Slate did. Uh, the Bitcoin competitor beloved by the alt-right in criminals. And we did a whole video responding to this. Kind of stupid, ridiculous stuff. Go check it out. I'll link it. But this is the last uh, comment for today. From our loved Bob Murphy. Robert Murphy, go give him a follow. He's a good Austrian economist. Over at the Mises Institute, I believe. Senior fellow, he says when they come for Bitcoin, they will remind us that it was released in a white paper. <laughs> right, so um, they're going to say it's been racist since the beginning. Uh, there's a reason they wrote this on white paper, right? Oh man, I need to, I need to smoke a cigarette. Ugh. But yeah, it's they're going to come up with a bunch of crazy stuff. Like it's like the whole uh, this thing, which used to mean. Uh, well, A-OK -okay or like, uh, you know, punch me or something like this. Like they were able to link this with White Taco Supreme. <laughs> Dude, they're going to try it all, man. They're going to come after it. I guarantee it. So guys, just get ready for the fight. It is on. And private digital cash, as neutral as it is, they're going to try to associate with whatever groups that could make you believe it is like some evil cryptocurrency or some evil technology which needs to be regulated and or banned okay that's what's going to happen uh just trying to keep you guys ahead of the curve because we ourselves are trying to get ahead of the curve in building parallel economies and making it so that we're not trapped in this 1984 panopticonical brave new world global system of scientific dictatorships so that's about it i'm a little bit tired today uh, and I say that a lot, but frankly, trying to quit smoking cigarettes, like you do just kind of have like a fatigue element involved there. Uh, so I'm just eating a bunch of brownies, <laughs> not those kinds of brownies either. Um, but yeah, pray for me. Uh, I'm working on it. I've quit so many times that I feel like I'm getting very good at quitting smoking cigarettes, but that's not the thing you want to get good at, right? Because, uh, at some point you just want to stop doing it. And that is where I'm at. So the neurons aren't firing as fast, but hopefully the grace of God will come to me and help me 
move out of this uh it's not even so much an addiction i smoke like a couple a day but uh or maybe that's the demons talking i don't know pray for me pray for me but i hope you guys enjoyed the content it was a little bit of a longer one i need to do some shorter videos coming up but we're in a financial war ladies and gentlemen we're in a financial war monero's the tip of the spear monero first and tomorrow we're going to be having a video that is again celebrating Monero Bros and the Monero Bro Battalion, which are adopting this stuff as businesses, as individuals. And remember, guys, if you have uh, a business or know of a business which is using Pirate Chain or Monero or other private cryptos, reach out to me. I want to give them a shout out and I want to encourage people to use those businesses, those services, so that we could support each other in making our networks more robust, more powerful in the face of enemies like GoPro or excuse me, GoFundMe, and Patreon and PayPal and all these uh, firms who are part of the Axis Financial Syndicate, right? And if you guys have a better name than that, that's kind of a mouthful, let me know. That's it, Monero Mateo. Check out the donation addresses below for our favorite private cryptos. If you want to do a private super chat, check out the social media sites uh, for Gab, for uh, Twitter, uh, for Odyssey especially. Thank you all of you who are coming over to Odyssey. And that's it, Monero Mateo. You guys have a wonderful day. God bless.